Okay, hello and welcome everybody. So this is section 18 of the notes and that is the first time we will discuss a real robust estimate for a regression line. And what we'll do here is called M estimators and I'll show you in a minute that the generalization of the least squares estimator and what we will get is a class of estimators which can be robust for Y space outliers. So they will not deal with X space outliers we'll see, but they solve kind of part of the problem. Okay, let's see what that is. Okay, so to understand what M estimators are, let us just remember how did the least squares regression estimator work. So there we had beta hat, and that was minimizing the residual sum of squares. So it was the beta for which the residual sum of squares was smallest. And the quantity we are minimizing is either some i from 1 to n epsilon i hat, or alternatively we can expand that. So we have some i from 1 to n, and then we have yi minus beta 0 minus beta 1 xi1 up to beta p xip squared. So that's the residual sum of squares. And the whole idea of the M estimator is that instead of taking the square here, we can take other functions. And the square grows and grows, so that penalizes large residuals quite strongly. And if there is an outlier that will be far away from the line, so epsilon will be large and epsilon squared will be very large, so that will have a strong effect of the regression line. And if we replace the square with a different function, then what we can do is we can take functions which grow less quickly at the outside, so are less susceptible to outliers. So what we do is, instead of epsilon squared, we do some function rho of epsilon, same thing here. And so rho of epsilon is some function, and it should be symmetric, and it needs to have a minimum at zero, otherwise the function would not minimize the residuals. And if we do rho of epsilon equals epsilon squared, we have just seen, then we get least squares regression. So that's already the idea in a minute. And now there are a few things to know. So the first one is the square has good properties mathematically. So for example, when we wanted to find that minimum here, we could take derivatives and the derivative of a square is rather easy. And so we could get an actual closed form expression for the location of the minimum. And from the way I'm saying this, you can probably already guess, in general, that does not work anymore. So in general, no closed form expression for beta hat. So what we need to do, and I'll discuss this in the second video, we need to find some numeric method which minimizes this function as a function of beta numerically to find the beta for which it is small. Then there are also a bit more theoretical problems, namely also in general the minimum is not unique and this function has no name, let gives give this a name, let's call that s of beta. So s of beta can have multiple local minima. And let me just do a sketch of a function with multiple local minima. If we just think it could look like this, so here could be beta and here could be s of beta, then you see numerical methods for finding the minimum may go wrong. So many of them are some kind of downhill method. And if you think, say, you start here and then go downhill, then the method may go here and happily report it has found a minimum. And it kind of has, but we really wanted to find that point here where the global minimum is, so that was not what we wanted. And in general, finding the minimum of an arbitrary function is a difficult problem. So here I want to discuss a special case where everything gets a bit easier, and that is when the objective function is convex. So a convex function looks like that, for example. The definition is that if I connect two points of the graph with the line, that then the line is above the graph. So f is convex if and only if f of lambda x plus 1 minus lambda y, that's the point down here, x is here and y is there and lambda is in 0, 1, that that is below the straight line, so below lambda f of x plus 1 minus lambda f of y. 
that's the point up here. So that's the formal definition. And if functions are convex, you already see they cannot have wiggles like that, because in this case I can find a line here where the function value is above, that's not convex. And for the same reason that function is definitely not convex, I can draw a line here, that function value is above. And you already see what that does, that achieves that there cannot be local maxima separating two local minima. So for a convex function one can show every local minimum is also a global minimum. And I wanted to say there is at most one local minimum, but that's not true because that function, which is flat here, is convex. Every line connecting two points of the graph is above the graph, but that has more than one minimum, but at least all the minima are together. So one can prove the set of all minima is convex and connected and so on. Whatever. So that's not worry. I'm just saying for minimization, convexity is a good property. For a start, they cannot be separated local minima, and I want to show you a lemma, that's lemma 18.1 in the notes, which says rho is convex, then s is convex. And in the statement, rho is the function in here, which we use to replace epsilon squared, and s is the function we are to minimize. So s being convex makes this minimization easier and makes it so that local minima are global minima, so we can just use downhill methods for minimization. Okay, so let's see, s is some row of the residuals. So let's do a proof. So s we want to show is convex, so we need to show that that property holds for s, and we are allowed to use that that property holds for rho, because we assumed rho is convex. So we do s of lambda, and now I don't call it x, I call it, say, beta 1, plus 1 minus lambda beta 2. We need to show that's less than or equal to lambda s of beta 1 times 1 minus lambda s of beta 2. But first, by definition, that is sum i from 1 to n, rho of y minus x i 1, lambda beta 1 plus 1 minus lambda beta 2, and the first component of these betas, minus x i 2, lambda beta 1 second component, plus 1 minus lambda beta 2 second component, and so on. Originally we would have squared that expression, but here the whole point of this section is we apply the function rho instead to get an m estimator. Now, what we do is relatively simple, namely we can write y as lambda y plus 1 minus lambda y. That's straightforward, see lambda y cancels. And then these here we can write as x i j, lambda can go here, beta 1 j plus 1 minus lambda x i j beta 2 j. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to group all the first terms together and I'm going to group all the second terms together and what I get is then sum i from 1 to n rho and now I do first the terms with lambda. So I get lambda y minus lambda x i 1 beta 1 1 minus lambda x i 2 beta 1 2 and then I get 1 minus lambda y minus 1 minus lambda x i 1 beta 1 2 minus 1 minus lambda x i 2 beta 2 2 and so on. And I think you see probably already what I'm setting up here. I can now take out the lambdas, so I do some i from 1 to n rho lambda and then I do y minus x i 1 beta 1 1 minus x i 2 beta 1 2 and so on plus 1 minus lambda y minus x i 1 beta 2 first component minus x i 2 beta 2 second component and so on and now finally I can use the property that rho is convex that is true by assumption and let us just remind ourselves if rho is convex I can make the whole expression larger by taking the sum and the lambdas outside. Go from here to here, that means. So what I will get is sum lambda rho this plus 1 minus lambda rho of that. Let's just write that. 
lambda rho of y minus xi1 beta 1 1 minus xi2 beta 1 2 plus 1 minus lambda rho y minus xi1 beta 2 1 minus xi2 beta 2 2 and now we are done now we just split that into two expressions so that equals lambda sum i from 1 to n rho and then that expression with beta 1 plus 1 minus lambda sum i from 1 to n rho that expression with beta 2 and you see these expressions are what we call s so we get lambda s of beta 1 plus 1 minus lambda s of beta 2 and now we have shown what was needed namely s of the interpolated point is less than or equal to all the way down to the interpolation of s at the endpoints of the interval so what we have shown is s of lambda beta 1 plus 1 minus lambda beta 2 is less than or equal to lambda s of beta 1 plus 1 minus lambda s of beta 2 which means s is convex. Good, so that completes this proof. And as I just said, S is convex is very useful for the minimization. There are better methods available, and in particular, you cannot get stuck in local minima. So, for that function row to be convex is a useful property if we can have it. Good, so I will stop that video here. There are a few more details in the notes, which I will leave for you to read. Good, so this is how M estimators are defined. And in the next video, coming up in a minute, we'll see how to actually compute M estimators using a computer. Okay, so see you very soon.